Sirius XM. XM. This is the OP and Anthony Show. I want to thank NYR Fan 46 on the Twitter. The latest Opie and Anthony podcast is the best of Bill Burr. This could be their best podcast yet. Bill Burr centric? That's right. Very, uh, very right there, sir. Yes. So go get it. The Opie and Anthony podcast, episode 17. Wow, we've done 17 already. Go get it, please. And spread, uh, spread the word that we're doing uh, a podcast every week as well. Anthony Bourdain. There he is. Welcome, hey. sir. Hello. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? How are you? Good, man. I feel How like we you? just Good saw man. you. Yeah, right? It's probably been a while. You're all tan. Yeah, I just got back from vacation last night. So we, we just Where'd got back go? to Hamptons. Ah. Oh. I went totally over to the dark side. You did. Yeah. Do you like That's, it? This was the only the second normal vacation in like my life. Yeah, without having to go somewhere very far away. and. Were you getting recognized uh, out I there? Think, I think, you know, the natural inclination would say, you know, you're on permanent vacation, motherfucker. You yeah, know what true, you true. But, um, this is the first time that I've actually, you know, done the sort of normal month barbecue in the backyard, oh, nice. you know, super dad thing. So, like, I, I've kind of overcompensated. I become this sort of manic, like, manic, frenetic, like, psychotic, you know, super dad. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, I've gone full Ina. You know, you it's did. like, you know, you know, everybody get together. We're, you know, we're having well, you know, all of the greatest hits from my Jersey Shore, you know, childhood vacations. You know, we're having the goddamn steamers and the lobster, too. <laughs> yes. and, you know, you'll eat your fucking corn and I'm getting the tomatoes at the farm stand and <laughs> yeah. you'll enjoy it. And, you know, you get you know, the nine different choice of nine different pancakes. And I'm like, you know, it's like way, 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 way over the top. Uh-huh. You know? We had a, we had similar summer, sir. Didn't yeah. dig any holes for the kids. Yeah. I was digging holes every day on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Every day you had to hit water with your damn hole. Yeah, I just, I feel it's a normal family, normal family, right. you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, and then, let's be normal. <laughs> then it got so crazy, we were doing our own clamming. Yeah. Did you do that? Uh, I haven't done it. That's a really good idea. God it's man, awesome. Yeah. When you feel a clam with your big toe, mm-hmm. there's yeah. nothing better. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's nothing yeah. better. I'm I can think you. of a better thing to feel a clam with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the most considerate driver too, like in the Hamptons, because you know, I drive like a black foreign car like uh-huh. that every other douchebag who goes to the Hamptons <laughs> right. for the summer drives. So like I really go out of my I'm hyper aware having worked summer jobs and, and been sort of a, a local uh in a vacation community. You know I you know I know what it's like to be a local and have all of these douchebags and assholes yeah yeah beamers coming into your town. I'm like I, I really try hard, super hard to not be that guy. Right. It's almost impossible though sometimes, right? It, it is. Yeah, yeah. Every stoplight it's a it's a yes. minefield. Yeah. They're all slow and local. <laughs> I don't give anybody any leeway these days on a, a red light. If if they're in front of me at a red light or an arrow, especially, yeah. and I'm behind them and they don't move the second it turns, I know that they're texting or something. They're not paying attention to the light. So I'm the, like, there it is. There it is. Green. <laughs> I'm like on in a second. Do they yeah. even catch them looking in the mirror? Like, oh, yeah, the and fuck? then I just go go. <laughs> See, I, for me, um, I don't do that because I'm, I'm hyper aware at all times that I, there's generally speaking someone in the car with a an even shorter fuse and a, and a lower threshold than me. And my wife is there. Oh, I, I, you know, two seconds. It's I kill you with my bad hands, you motherfucker. You know, and, <laughs> yeah, you and, can, and she can, which makes it <laughs> more troubling. I met your wife. Yeah, in um, it was uh, in Vegas at the uh, UFC. She was in the back area oh, wow. where all the fighters are actually, and. Yep. Uh, Reed Harris introduced us. She was very lovely. She chatted very briefly. And she could kick some ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we all know. Uh, 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 that's handy. Man. Yeah, I guess she was there for the fight. Uh, you don't have to yeah. deal with that when your wife says something. You got to step in and settle the the dispute. Oh, no, no. Yeah. No, it's exactly the opposite, you know. Good for we just you. had Misha Tate in. Uh, she was, do you know who she is? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. She's lovely. Yeah, she, um, I'm she looking looked forward to really the, uh, good. I'm looking forward to the, what is it, the uh, Ultimate Fighter yeah, coming tonight, up, right? yeah. Like, it's uh, mm. is it? It's Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey and yeah. Misha Tate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tonight yeah. starts tonight. Great. Yeah, we'll be watching that at my house. If she stretches on the show, oh my god, then she stretched Anthony Bourdain. We've lost so, our minds. She's so fantastic. Holy and sexy. crap! Mm. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I got to say, I saw the whole season of Parts Unknown. I loved it. Oh, I know you're here you. to promote uh, the getaway, but I loved Parts Unknown. Thanks. You going to Libya? 15th, uh, the 15th, it starts again. On, again. Yeah. Uh, and the, the best episode, I think, was Quebec. You're reading some <laughs> yeah. weird shit up there. I like what, you know, one of the joys of making the show is that, you know, one week it's Libya, uh, obviously a pretty serious show. Right. Uh, you know, the next I'm basically just stuffing food into my, rich food into my face in, in, in Quebec. You know, there's you almost really said no... food into my rich face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was, that was about as, as, as over the top, uh, you know, food. Food centric, self indulgent show as I've ever made. What is sure. Beaver taste? It was Beaver, right? Yeah. What is uh, that surprisingly really? good? Doesn't sound I, like I it could possibly be that. good, you know? It's, yeah, because it's, it's kind of rodent y. <laughs> well, you would think it'd be oily <laughs> yeah. and rodent y, but it's yeah. actually, you know, more in the. I'm not going to say it yeah, tastes say like it, chicken. Say yeah, say it. chicken. <laughs> it's, like chicken. It. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's always chicken. Yeah, I, I guess it uh, depends on how it's prepared, right? Uh, like yeah, I'm sure there's a way to fuck it up. It's, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, you can fuck up chicken easily. You know, pop it in the microwave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just nuke this some this year, it's uh, Israel, West Bank, Gaza uh, show. Uh, mm. Spain, a, a really dark. Really, I, I have no idea. I don't know if the network's even seen the Tokyo show. But we did a very deranged uh, <laughs> Tokyo show about the sort of the connection between uh, the sort of fetishism and repressed Japanese sexuality and porn. <laughs> wow. And there, 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 so there's a lot of hentai, tentacles, uh, bondage, uh, and sushi. Wow. And sushi. <laughs> Let's throw in the sushi. And Det we did a Detroit show, Denmark. That's no, going to be a good one. How, wow. how bad is Detroit these days? You know, I love the, look, that's a city I really, really love. And, and I, you know, Detroiters really hate it when people from outside go in and say, wow, it's really awesome. It looks like ancient Rome. Look at these ruins taking pictures. <laughs> Romans don't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can't look away. I mean, it really is. It's, un, it looks like Chernobyl. And I, I, that's wow. not a joke. It looks like, I've been to Chernobyl. It looks like Chernobyl. Um, wow. overgrown, you know, all of these 70,000 unoccupied, uh, you know, vacant wow. buildings. Uh, it's just incredible structures just left to, to rot, uh, you know, fields, you know, waist high grass and, and, you know, old gardens. The house isn't there anymore, but the gardens are now sort of growing wild. It's pretty amazing, but, um, you know, it's a tragic, but awesome hmm, right. place. I mean, if, if you don't like Detroit, you know. How you feel about Detroit is one thing. Detroiters is, is another thing. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a city with a sense of humor. I guess you have to have one, but, but yeah. uh, no it's just a place shit. I've loved for a long time. What do you do on that episode show. without giving it away? Um, we hanging out with a guy, uh, Charlie Ladoff, who wrote a, a, a former New York Times reporter and now a reporter for uh, a television station in Detroit and, uh, you know, born and raised and uh, wrote a great book called Detroit and American Autopsy. And hmm. uh, so we basically hung out with, you know, old school Detroit uh, politicians, cops, firemen. Um, you know, it's definitely not the new, you know, hipster pizzeria that you must know about. You know, <laughs> right. really yeah, yeah. What are they going to do to fix that place? I mean, there's no reason an American city should be in that bad a shape. It's going to have to shrink. I mean, mm. that's uh, what I mean, what what would be nice to happen and what will probably happen are two different things. I mean, what would be nice to happen is all the people who've who've hung out there and fought it out and, and survived and, and held on to their homes as everybody around them, you know, burned down or ran away or turned into crack houses. You know, it would be great if, if the future of a, the future of Detroit included them. I, I don't know that it will, you know, I think it'll, it'll definitely mm. shrink. It's down from over 2 million people to a city of 700,000. Mm. It's 134 Crazy. square miles. So police and fire coverage is forget about it. I mean, they don't have computers, you know the, the you know the what well, national crime control computers in uh, in the yeah. police cars. They use their own cell phones sometimes to call in. They take they take the bus to murder scenes. It's not unheard of. Jesus um, it's pretty ludicrous. Uh, uh, wow. But what, what will happen? I think it'll it'll probably be like the Lower East Side. You know, uh, the, mm. the people living on the Lower East, East Side are not the people who you know lived there, who who grew up there, and then who lived through all the bad times. They have to re uh, readjust borders and districts, and that's the biggest pain in the ass because it all comes down to who's getting the money. 
um, for uh, being within city limits. You start pulling in the city limits, and now that no man's land outside, right. what happens to that? How does that get developed? Yeah, it's a big, big big question. But you know what? People overlook is it is an incredible. It's a beautiful city. Mm. It's beautiful. I mean, even the the buildings that are maintained, they're gorgeous, and it's just about everything cool in America, if not the world, came from Detroit or Detroit, especially the automobile, the credit card, uh, you know, the music of Detroit. It's you know, it's everything American. Yeah, yeah. If we can't get it right there, you know, we really should sort of fold up our tents. How did it fall so far into the toilet? Was it just the auto industry? Collapsing? Uh, the auto it it, it shrunk. Uh, basically, the auto uh, certainly didn't help. That the audio uh, the uh, auto industry started to contract. I mean, so you know, you went from a city of two million people down to, to seven hundred thousand. It started the decline. Really started in the fifties. Oh, really? So quite some time. Mm. And there was a lot of uh, you know, not just white flight, but black middle class flight. Um, but decades of really spectacular political corruption. I, mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know how many mayors in a row have been in the joint now, but it's quite a number of them. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it, you know they've they've had more than their share of, uh, of 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 problems. Did you see hope there, Anthony? Any hope uh, at all? Or was it just downright depressing <laughs> for you? Yeah, because they're they are obstinate. Uh, they are obstinate, proud, funny, tough as hell. Um, you know, at, anytime you you have that in a in a you know in a city's character, there, there's going to be hope. Right. Um, but I think you know whatever happens, a lot of people who deserve better are going to end up getting screwed. I think mm. that's that's the way it always plays out. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, even on a neighborhood by neighborhood. You know, basically, you look at, like, you know, the Meat District or the Lower East Side here, or Hell's Kitchen. You know, you look at the neighborhood then and who lives there now. Right. You know, first, oh, come, totally first come the artists, you know, <laughs> <laughs> then come the boutique hotels and yep. then, the, you know, swarms of hipster douchebags. <laughs> it's different, though, in a small area like New York, like, you know, because you, you can move into, say, the Lower East Side and you're still only a quick ride for, to Chelsea or we're at Midtown. Like Detroit, mm-hmm. being spread out that far, even you know, if you like gentrify one area, th- then the rest of it is still a shithouse. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard, it seems like, something that big to... Because mm. hipsters do, in a weird way, save certain places. Colin really? Quinn pointed that out to me, too. They're ballsy. Like, as much as it's fun to trash them, and I do, they move into fucking Bedford-Stuyvesant. <laughs> They're these fucking white guys with bell-bottoms and fucking beetle hairdos <laughs> taking the subway to Bed-Stuy at 2 in the morning. There's, like, there's yeah, a certain yeah. balls to that. Which The, the man is right. And yeah. you know, they're already there, like, you know, artists, uh, uh, urban farmers, uh, a lot of people making use of the, the, you know, there's a lot of dead space there that people are growing stuff and wow. producing, you know, Local vegetables and produce for underserved areas. Look, there's no doubt about it. Hipsters will, you know, if, to the extent that these places are going to get saved, it's yeah, it's, it's going to be somebody with an ironic beard and uh, got, you know, <laughs> back, of, back of American spirits in the, yeah. in the, in the, in the front pocket. <laughs> nice. What's, so, uh, what, yeah, what's this now? The getaway you're working on. Uh, well, well, the getaway is what for Esquire Channel, and um, it's basically, you know, I used to do a show called The Layover, where I'd go and do mm-hmm. get a twenty four, forty eight hours in a in a city. Um, my partners and I started thinking, well, this would be actually a much better concept if we got people who were actually had some connection to these places and mm-hmm. knew what to do in those places. Were, you know, uh, so we are basically grabbing people who've accomplished things in their lives, who are funny, who've got something going on, who have a particular connection with a place um, and would, you know, are good at, would would be the right person to drop Mm. into these locations. And we sent them off and let them loose. So we have um, Joel McHale we sent to Ireland to. uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. um, And uh, Aisha Tyler to Paris. And uh, let's see who else is on the show. Aziz Ansari. Um, so we sort of try to, you know, look for interesting people with interest who've done interesting things with interesting things to say and send them someplace, you know, really cool that they mm-hmm. felt really strong about, strongly about, or, or had roots there themselves. But they had not necessarily gone there in the past. Uh, if, anything, if it's or? a situation, in almost every case, they've been there before, oh, okay. or it's a place they were just dying to go to. Right. It was a, you know, sort of a personal obsession. Yeah, so yeah. there's always a connection to. The are place. you on the show too, or is, or are yeah. you just producing it? Gotcha. Just producing. 
Very cool. Oh, nice. Look at that. Producer hat. Just slap that credit on yep. the screen and Watch send out. me the check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah and that's also it. doing uh, another season of Mind of a Chef. Uh, that's for PBS. I'm producing that as well. Uh, this year it's Sean Brock <laughs> and April Bloomfield. Uh, yeah. Last season it was David Chang. And... Um, Speaking of uh, Korean dudes named David, I saw your uh, podcast with uh, Dave, my friend David. Oh, Joe. Dave Cho, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Has he been on the show? No, no, I'd love to have him he on. Would be fun. Yeah, he's a really yeah, cool yeah. guy. What's he about? I don't even know him. He's uh, he's he's most known for his, his Facebook, his genius face. He's the highest paid artist in history because he did Facebook's uh, wall for stock or whatever. Okay, and when it translated, oh, it, when, it, when it when it when it cashed in, it was like over two hundred million. Like it's that's Jeez, that's a yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. He basically, he was showing I think in like you know beauty parlors and uh, you know shoe stores in the neighborhood. I mean, he was a successful graffiti artist, street artist, and very successful degenerate gambler. Oh. Uh, but I mean, I think he, they, they asked him if he'd do some artwork for Facebook and he said, yeah, uh, 50 grand. And they said, oh, we're a, we're a little startup. We can't afford that kind of money. How about we pay you in stock? And I think he oh. cashed out, at, you know, north of 200 million. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would paint my face with Tommy Morrison's dick. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> he wasn't the guy that was featured in um, yeah. Korean Town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I do know him. He's a it is, his podcast. Is was fun. he the guy that painted your avatar for? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great artist. Great guy. Uh, he was. Great he's a cool dude, speaker. man. And he you doesn't know, need the money. He just loves doing it. Yeah. You talk about gambler. That that right there is like oh, I'll gamble and take a little stock instead of money and that's like the hit of, of yeah. a lifetime well he's he's post gambling rehab but i mean he's a guy he's he'd bet like 50 grand on on the coin toss oh boy 50 grand on what color of uh of gatorade's coming out of the you know they're pouring on the coach <laughs> yeah, at the end. yeah yeah wow. not not <laughs> oh yeah not a healthy gambler <laughs> no. yeah <laughs> No, <laughs> but he probably has a great story. And when you got that much money, it's like you're lucky you got it out of your system before you blew through everything. But I mean, I just saw him uh, a few weeks ago. He 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 hitchhiked across America with his uh, with his buddy, uh, shooting it with a you know little little handy cam. Hmm. Um, he he rides trains, you know, like hobo style. Right, right. Wow. Um, he vacations in places like Afghanistan and the Congo. Um, no. He's he not was in your Mexico. usual rich guy by a long shot. And he just went to Mexico uh, right after we did the podcast. He went down there for that's kind of crazy to show some. Yeah, yeah, man, it's like you, so you got to enjoy your money and not change who you are, but you got to be careful too. There's a certain line you got to draw. Like, all right, there's a oh, reality boy, would here. Would a kidnapper love to get their hands on him down there in Mexico? I bet. Uh, yeah, I'm hopefully he's back now. But oh, wow. yeah, no, no, he's back. He had a big uh, exhibit down there. But a great, great guy. He'd be great, great on the show. Yeah, we talked about fucking perversion for quite a while. <laughs> Yeah. Have you yes. been to uh, Mexico in a while? No, uh, I've never been. Not I'm, you, Jimmy. I'm, 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 <laughs> uh, hoping to. Uh, this coming season, uh, not the one that's going to be airing, but I mean, I start filming again in yeah. November. Oh, uh, wow. I'm hoping to do a, a Mexico show. Um, Any concerns? Cartel <laughs> um, where there are mm. these bloggers that are apparently in photo, sort of amateur photojournalists who go to crime scenes. They basically mm -hmm. are documenting all of the thousands and thousands and thousands. Uh, more, more. I think something like 60,000 people have been killed <laughs> in just the last few years. Wow. Uh, they document the, the crime scenes. So we might do that. Huh. You know, mix it up. Sort of fun Mexico and then dark side. of. You're crazy to go down there, man. Even for all the <laughs> places, that's oh, nuts. On. The fuck the cartels is just, they're scary, man. That, you, you gotta love that place, though. You gotta love been. it. I mean, our, my whole crew are so so happy there. I mean, yeah. of all of the places that we shoot, we it's one of the few places where we'll, we'll shoot a scene of me shoving food in my face, end the scene, and then we'll all go and eat. Mm -hmm. we'll just okay, all yeah. stand there in the street eating, you know, sort of some grandmother, you know, making tacos or tortillas. It's you know, it's just a great drinking culture, great eating culture. The music is amazing. It's just really. You know, particularly because, well, like Detroit, they're a, they're a culture that have been just so relentlessly fucked over the years <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that they've True. had to develop a really brilliant sense of, of, of humor and melodrama. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just a place that I really, really, really love. 
Yeah, I, I went to Cancun a couple of years ago, and I did okay with the water. And the night before, I just finally I shot two pilots for MTV. Neither took off. And um, <laughs> I, I was uh, I had to shoot the next morning, and I drank our cappuccino the night before, not realizing that was made with local water. So I'm surrounded by teenagers in 110 degree te- heat with lights on a beach, and I, I had to keep running and shitting. Oh it no! It was horrendous. Ooh. Horrendous. You were percolating. Yeah, yeah it was you sort of have to plan yeah. around the shitting like a mink you know uh, <laughs> yeah but why don't the locals uh shit they like do that? they do well i mean um that has it <laughs> it's horrifying that i know this but uh actually I love they crap you know. a lot more frequently they do mm-hmm. and have really? lower incidents of rectal cancer i don't know why i know that but mm. is that because of that you think apparently there's a connection between frequent shitting also squat cultures Lower incidence of rectal cancer. Well, you, where, where you squat rather than you know ride the the bowl. Well, you know when I when I shit, uh, this had to come up at one point. I I there's a, I have a, a thing that I prop my feet up on because it's supposed to be my knees are actually raised when I shit. I sit well, and my knee. You have yeah, a mirror in front of the. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and a fucking a video camera. It's my new website. Um, He's got a little yeah. stool for his feet yeah. there, Anthony. I I do. I prop my yeah. feet up. Yeah. I got yeah. it from a health place. Um, Amazing. And so my feet are always kind of propped up in the squat thing, which is is better for you. It's 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 better for your system. Well, look, if anyone would like to, you know, I I, I don't I don't generally do product endorsements or anything like mm. that. But I would really like a Japanese toilet. You know, oh, one wow. of those deluxe Japanese toilets with the alternating spray that moves back and yes, forth at various temperatures. On, yeah. You know, it ionizes the air, makes covering sounds of tropical rainforest to cover <laughs> the sound of your groaning and spraying. Um, <laughs> <It's> spraying. <laughs> cleans, cleans itself, you know, just a, the gentle, warm yeah. pulsing of water, you know, back and forth. Heated, over your air and, conditioned. And region. Uh, yeah, everyone yeah. on my show are upset. It's like we, they, we all look forward to Japan. And everybody shows up on set late. They're all like, they'll come out with this blissed out look like, oh, sorry, man. I'm like, the best dump ever. Again, that Japanese culture, there's something about the um, yeah. the nether regions that they just really are very well, attentive they were, to. Yeah. They're very focused on, oh, boy. on their holes. Yeah. Are they ever? Yeah. <laughs> that is a also, you know, it's thing. not just the, well, the, the tight focus is, uh, is a sort of. Uh, a, a sort of a signature of, of uh, you know, Japanese defenders. They have those clubs mm. where you go with like, uh, with, with a, what do you call it, a magnifying glass. You sit there, you see these like salary dudes sitting there with a magnifying glass. No way. Oh, that that's like a robot creepy. Strip, not really a strip club, it's sort of like a <laughs> robot cabaret, which was like the most insane. It's on the show. Uh, oh, it's really? It's basically a big, you know, sort of sexy cabaret with battling robots and dinosaurs and like pandas. <laughs> and, it's breakdancing, breakdancing robots. It's They're on the mollies. It's the best thing, thing ever. Yeah, they got to right. be on the mollies over there. It's the best. Where does I, that I come from? So strange. Have you figured it out yet? No, but I really Because like they're not it. really doing anything different than other people as far as uh, drinking and drugging. Well, they don't really have a lot of drugs there. there there's some sp- but, culture. But when you hear these stories, drinking, you would they, think there would be a lot of drugs involved. They're super savage drinkers. They're terrible. Really? They're like the worst drinkers in the world. I mean, <laughs> they're, by, by, they're done by like 7.30. And you got in like a uh, Shibuya district in uh, Tokyo. And it's like all these young guys already on their hands and knees, you know, puking oh, into wow. the gutter. While they're, they're, they're hot, completely sober girlfriends are like, you know, holding their hair back. And they just put up with this nonsense. They 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 te- they terrible 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 binge drinkers. They make the Brits look look and like good. And it's all sake or what? what, what no else beer, they, a lot whiskey, of beer, whiskey. Well, there, there's a big wine culture as okay. well. They just people really do like to. They, they don't get a lot of opportunity to behave irresponsibly. When they get that window of opportunity, they, they really yeah, like yeah. Gotcha. drink all night and then go show up at go right to work the next day is <sighs> not an unusual thing. And it's also with the bonding thing. The boss, everybody will sit around at work. Salary men will sit around at work waiting for the boss to go home. You don't want to go home before the boss. And the boss is not going home because he's his boss hasn't gone home yet. They just sit around, wow. jack it off, looking at the looking out the window till till midnight, and then it's like, oh well, let's go out. You know, company spirit. They, completely hammered <laughs> you're spending thousands of dollars on cocktails too because along with it you go to like these hostess bars where basically you're spending thousands of dollars for for someone to say oh you know your life is really interesting what do you do i work for a widget company oh that's so fascinating you're very you were the most interesting producer of widgets i've ever met and what a fascinating oh, business man. and you're so funny and delightful and let's 
you know, let's play, you know, you don't get even laid for this, this money. You're wow. just, uh, it, that's very much the culture. So wow. you take your pleasure where you can. Wow. Ah, it's a crowded thing. culture. You know, you live with your parents till you're right. often, you're living with your parents till, till you're 30. You're not much room there. You could be talking to me. That's when I moved out when uh, I was 30. <laughs> How humiliating. <laughs> I moved back in at 29 myself. For a little while. Oh. At least you were out for a while. Yeah, I was out 18 to 29. Northern Sun. Need a little help in between radio jobs. <laughs> uh, magnifying glasses. Yeah, that's a little that's odd. You know, you've heard, I've, you, we, you've I heard thought I've heard it all, all but not you know, that one. The, the dirty underwear vending machine. Yeah, all that. Know, yeah, yeah. But a magnifying glass. Frotage is big. You know. What's that? Groping, oh, frotage. Grope, yeah, yeah, yeah. Groping and you know, on the subways and stuff. I always thought that was called frottage. I, frottage. I did that in high school. Frottage, right? In high school, I did this. I called it grazing, where I, I would try to get, I would literally, in my mind, go back and just jerk off remembering what I did, and I would get like a oh. double cheeker, double cheeks with a crack. I did it to a fucking gym teacher once in the pool, where I was walking by, and she was standing there in a fucking bikini, and her ass was amazing. And I'm like, I have to do it. And I allowed my hand to graze over both of her cheeks, and I just and I felt her turn around. Oh, she knew and what she was up to. It was just me and her. I was oh, really oh, wow. the pool. There's Jesus, plenty of room in the Jimmy. pool. Dude, no, we were walking by. She was standing outside the pool. Oh, okay. And I allowed it, and I knew if I turned what around. Predator. <laughs> I knew if I turned around. <laughs> yeah. I knew if I turned around, I was dead. If I acknowledged her, I was dead. But she stared at me, and the fact that I just kept walking gave me the ounce of plausible deniability. Right, right. Mm. And there's a substitute gym teacher whose ass I grabbed one time in a crowd. What's the statute of limitation on the <laughs> sexual yeah, assault, yeah. Uh, by <laughs> the way, if, just, if you're listening? I just grabbed it in, like in, in a, you know, a crowded uh, hallway where I just grabbed her ass. Well, that's some shameful, shameful, sick, sick, sick. That is shit. like twisted. No, that's not stuff that bad. Right that's there. just normal. I wasn't getting laid. I was like, you I know, 15. Know. I just would jerk off thinking about asses. Going out, no, I rubbing your <laughs> hand on, <laughs> on strangers, <laughs> on strangers, and then Heinies. beating off to it th with to the thought of it later. They actually it's have clubs twisted. for that in in Tokyo. When you <laughs> go, it's, a, it's a it's a reproduction of a subway train, and you go in <laughs> and and you oh be, gosh, people pretending on. to be other passengers are there to be willingly. They're, they're pretend that they don't know wow. what's going on, and you can go in and sort of rub up against them. But if you're going in knowing everyone's pretending, yeah, it's, it's, it's no still, fun. Are you still getting off a little bit, uh, if that's your thing? Yeah, we didn't fully investigate this okay. subject. <laughs> right. We got into uh, uh, Shibaru, I think it's called. It's a Japanese rope bondage, uh, which is very big. Hentai, which is uh, interesting. And what's called otaku culture, which is basically nerd or geek culture. People who spent pretty much their whole lives living, you know, uh, expressing themselves through anime characters. Oh, or boy. What are called vocaloids, who are sort of... Um, uh, holographic uh, characters who actually give concerts and sing. You can, you can go see them. Uh, so you could theoretically, you could have, you know, a, a virtual girlfriend, a hologram girl, like an archer, you know, a hologram girlfriend. That, that could be a, is so. They're fun. extremely creative. They have whole districts of it's toys and, and, and fantasy characters. And uh, right, I don't um, know. It's got to come from a, a, such a, a powerful yeah. uh, a traditional culture that was just decimated during a war. <laughs> yeah. Now let's all pretend we're an octopus with eight vaginas and a hat. <laughs> oh, okay. it is, it's really weird, though. Like, I was thinking, of, I got, we, we, we interviewed uh, the guy who basically invented uh, tentacle porn. And yeah. uh, he gave me this really fantastic T-shirt, and I was thinking of, of bringing it in for you guys. And then I thought, they can't put that anywhere. In America, you can't put that <laughs> up on can. a wall. You'll get sued. It's too horrendous. <laughs> Over there, I'm interviewing this guy about the history of tentacle porn and his work. And it's a we're we're at a very sort of traditional Japanese restaurant, uh, like a shabu shabu place with a little burner in the center of the table. We're having beers and eating, and the proprietors are these older Japanese women in them, seventy, eighty, you know, very conservative dress. And here his this guy has his work spread out across the table, oh, and it is. It's just mind-blowingly obscene. <laughs> yeah. And not a blink. This, oh, that's very interesting. That's very very good work. Oh, please uh, tell me more about your, you know, what, what what's the octopus doing there? And what's his name? And <laughs> oh, just God, not that's... a blink. Just totally yeah, there's, very, there's you know. So a lot of ways they're a lot on. less are, fucked up about hmm. sex than we are. Are we going to learn where yeah. that came from <laughs> if we watch the show? Where tentacle porn yeah. came from? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yes. I am curious because I find it to be very silly, like all that stuff, like anything that's sex, like when they have, an I hate anime. Some of that anime stuff's not bad. I just don't like the, you know, oh, oh, with the teardrops <laughs> shooting off and 
with with their giant giant eyes. (laughs) Really? And there's six cocks and they have hooks in them and fucking. What are you doing? (laughs) Just wish your dick was bigger like the rest of us. You don't have to fucking paint it like that obscenely. I don't get it. Okay, you can't show dicks in Japanese porn. Yeah, yeah. Or pubic hair, right? Right. See? So, but tentacles they could show. If that makes so you know what why. Anthony just made sense. That's uh, exactly. We're getting to the answer already. But just show the dicks then and the, the friggin' pubes. What's the biggie okay, about that? Different different standards and practices. Can't show pubes. It's so but silly. An octopus. That's or a... an alien with a tentacle-like protuberance right, would right. be acceptable. <laughs> That's their way of saying mother effer on the regular radio. <laughs> They're kind of getting it past right. the censors by exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, that makes a little bit of sense. So that, the repressed culture does kind of cause that because it forces you know where you, it came from. Yeah, that makes less. That makes a lot more sense. It's not as crazy as I thought. No, it was. of course not. <laughs> but I don't like this <laughs> stuff. It's so odd. You're loving CNN. Yeah. I'm loving it. They've good been you, so good to me. I yeah. mean, they've, they've never blinked as far as uh, content, as far as what, what, yep. I'm, where I'm going, and you know, we've asked to go to some pretty upsetting places that no mm. other network in their right mind would have would have sent us. <laughs> you know, Congo, or, you know, the DRC. You know, they didn't blink. They were like, oh, yeah, we know people there. We could help you. That's you know, it, too. That's people a on great, the ground. Uh, a great uh, organization to be with because they have those uh, contacts. and Fixers. They have the, uh, they, yeah, yeah. The, they have the ability to, um, you know, use credentials and whatnot to get into yeah, some of a, these places. A, you know, a good fixer will save your life frequently in a place like Congo, and a bad one will fixer. really get you in the shit. Really? Oh, um, yeah. You know, just the, the local contracts. As far as content, yeah. what I say, how I say it, uh, what, what, how the show's going to look, you know, st- not a blink. They've been mm. totally appreciative and supportive of everything I've done. Um, That's they've, great. They've, 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 they've been great. I mean, I haven't had a single stupid conversation with an executive at uh, oh my god at, at CNN. <laughs> it's a, ex- an extraordinary. What's that like, sir? Smart, wow. Smart yeah. people. Wow. We've only had stupid conversations <laughs> right. yeah. with executives here. <laughs> smart, smart people who've uh, Get not it. only supported me, but also if they in every instance since the first conversation before I even sign up with them, uh, if someone at CNN said to me this this is going to happen and this is what we're going to do if mm. you do that. It happens. Like oh that. my god! Okay. I know it's incredible. Isn't this it? is amazing. Yeah. That's a never strange heard of this. place. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's an odd, magical and, place. And <laughs> magical, <laughs> it really is. You know, the music, the, the the storytelling style, the language, the content. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big change for them, and it, mm. I mean, it took a lot of balls for them yeah. to sort of stand up and stand next, stand by me, and and they've been really, really great. Did and you it, hear the story about the woman too? Speaking of fixers, who went to a, a, a Canadian girl, and she's just it was one of these idealistic girls who thinks, oh, the world is mm-hmm. good, and she wanted to be a journalist. Mm-hmm. And so she went to Somalia, mm-hmm. and, um, of course, her and her idealistic friend are fucking kidnapped by Islamic yeah. jihadists. Mm-hmm. How, and they're held for, she's, you know, she had a baby. It's just a nightmare. How far outside of the checkpoint were they when they got taken? I mean, it, it might have been 50 or 100 feet they'd gone oh, man. past the checkpoint. It was yeah. like literally because their fixers wouldn't go. And right. they're like, okay, we'll just drive. And then they were surrounded by, you know, the certain fixers really? wouldn't go. But yeah, the fixers said so you have to go on your own. That was the, you know, look. Yeah, that's a red that's a flag. big mistake. If, you're, if your fixer says that, nah, I don't, I'm not doing that. That's a, you know, they know. It's 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 the same as like when we first arrived in Vietnam years ago. Uh, me and my my now partners at Zero Point Zero were in the car. We're headed off to the hotel, and our fixer driver is just rambling on. Oh, welcome to Nha Trang. Oh, this, this restaurant over here is fantastic. Great seafood. That place over there, very good pork. Very good pork. You should eat there. It's superb. Next place he passed. Oh, that place is very good. And, you know, my friend says, oh, how's the food at my hotel? Where we're going? He says, oh, uh, it's, a, it's okay. That's like warning, flashing warning sign, which, uh. which my guy just drove right through, you know, basically. So, yeah, he had some crab soup there the next day at the hotel. And, you know, I've never seen anyone so sick. I mean, he, oh, he was like projectile vomiting for like three days, turned oh, blue, wow. lost like 30 pounds. I mean, lost his ability. to. He was sick for like six months. He was wow. really, really messed what up. What was it that he had? Did he get, uh, what, what exactly did he get for it? Some kind of crab or something. Parasitical. Oh, right. Something oh, bad. Fuck. But, but you know, look, when, you're, when your fixer says, I'm not so sure, that's. He knows. Diplomatic. Stop it. Right. No, right. don't what, eat there. <laughs> what do you know about uh, Syria? Have you ever been? 
Haven't been. Uh, would like to go. Um, it's a really messed up situation and far more complex than than, mm. than anybody's really talking about. Um, mm. I, look, I, I like the idea of doing something as supremely. Uh, if we bomb Syria, right? Mm. It's completely against our national interest to do that. It was really not in our national interest to help out in Libya either. That said, I'm really glad we helped out in Libya. That was a cool thing for us to do. You know, wow, we're actually mm. helping people who deserve to be helped. Um, we're actually do something for freedom, not for oil, whatever oil or whatever. Uh, I think I think it's a mess. I don't know that it's going to make anything better, but I I, I kind of like that we're we're at least talking about it. I don't know how it's going to turn out. What is clear for sure is Assad and his dad were two of the most reprehensible figures in the Middle East. I would love to see them go. I'm all for change. Like, I don't know whether the, the government, I doubt very much that the government in Egypt is, you know, is better for America than what we had before or that what the government we get in, that they get in Libya is going to be friendlier to America than the one before or, or, or Syria for that matter. But the fact that at least change is possible is something that is com was completely unthinkable not before the Arab Spring. Mm. Everybody in the Middle East thought, we're stuck with these assholes forever, forever. This is the way it's always going to be. So blood and chaos for a while, you know, I don't know. Mm. I mean, I was a very opposed to the Iraq War. That was a disaster. Clearly, it's, that didn't work out. Afghanistan hasn't worked out. I'm not saying any of this will work out. Um, but I, I sure as hell wouldn't be unhappy to see Assad go. I Doesn't it just suck when we help people and then they wind up hating our guts anyway? That's the frustrating part is that there's not an ounce of gratitude. Fucking five years later, we're the enemy and yeah, we were yeah. shit all along. That's my only objection. <laughs> but it's it. always the way. I mean, do you think the yeah. French particularly love, you know, do, do they love us? Or, no, you but know? they don't bomb our airlines. I mean, well, what, I, <laughs> what I like about Anthony Bourdain and your show is like you really get to, you know, learn about the people. You know, the episode you did in Libya, you're like, holy fuck, these people are pretty much like us. Well, just want to live and have a look, good time. There are good people over there like any place else. There's also a lot of bad people who would like to do sure. us harm. There are a lot of good people who, for various reasons, don't like us at all and would in no way be inclined to vote for anything that, that's right, right, good right. for us. Yeah. Uh, but they're people, you know, they love their kids. They, 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 they want a better life for themselves. They'd like to watch MTV. They, you know, they'd like to they like good TV. food. They they're like just, getting fucked up. They're not going to be right. calling us and saying thank you anytime soon that's for sure, sure. it's a very complex situation you've got um you know what? these uh, militia groups who are made up of what you know people are for lack of any smarter way to describe them moderates or you know what we would call reasonable or you know don't actively hate us uh a bunch of al-qaeda dudes uh, up against a repressive government that are using you know uh, po uh, you know chemical weapons on their own people who are also and and Hezbollah, so basically you've got like Al Qaeda associated people up against Hezbollah. You know, pick a team there. Yeah, um, yeah. Hezbollah. Uh, they, don't, <laughs> they don't attack us. <laughs> Hezbollah is shitty, but they, the Israel fucking hates it. Killed killed uh, over three hundred U.S. Marines That's back true. in yeah. Beirut back That's in true. the day. Uh, you know, uh, t uh, tortured to death a. Uh, uh, the CIA station chief. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about, you're, you're correct, but I mean, like, here, that we, they're not the threat to me in America. Hezbollah, I don't worry, I worry about Al-Qaeda more. Between those two groups, I worry about Al-Qaeda more. Yeah, look, you know, again, it's a t you know, tough, tough uh, thing. And of course, toss you know, a coin. I've met you, I'm, I, there's no doubt in my mind, we could all be having dinner with, with some Hezbollah folks uh, and have a perfectly great time. We, they would say some things that would be alarming yeah. to us while feeding us and being, you know, we had to deal with them in, in Beirut, you know? Yeah, Hey, yeah. American, how are you? You know, what you doing in my neighborhood? You know? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, <laughs> rolls up in the roll up in the Mercedes, you know, gold watch. I can't they're wait very, for They're not stupid people. They're very, they're very sophisticated. Yeah. Um, How'd you talk to them? What'd you tell them you're doing? Well, we were, we were shooting in their neighborhood, so within seconds of arriving, the, you know, Hezbollah showed up as, what are you doing in our neighborhood? And well, we're making a travel and food show. And so, you know, we just shot with, in order to get into Gaza for this, uh, uh, for this uh, latest show, uh, you know, Hamas had to give us uh, permission. So, you know, it's something. You're crazy. Something, Wait, how did you how did you get, get the permission? Crazy. That's amazing. Like, so yeah. when, they, when you say we're shooting a food show, how did Hezbollah well, respond? Well, travel and food show. At one point, we had everything set. A lot of 
what what is allowed to go in a, into Gaza is extremely restricted. Food, building materials, books, basic basic stuff. They're basically on. They're being rationed and mm-hmm. restrained. You, they can't fish more than three miles off their coast. Uh, getting back, getting over the Israeli border that that ain't really happening. However, for a while, you could, if you wanted Kentucky Fried Chicken in uh, in Gaza City, you could order out, and people would run through these tunnels they use to smuggle arms and other <laughs> contraband into Egypt, get you your Kentucky Fried Chicken, and bring it back through the tunnels. So we had this whole scene set up with Hamas where we were going to go down. We have cameras that are going to let us go down into the tunnels and follow our delivery guy over to Egypt to grab us our bucket Holy of chicken wow, and come shit. back in. And we spent a lot of time sitting out there by the tunnels. And in the end, it was, you know, they got paranoid about some, I don't know what happened. We mm-hmm. didn't. Um, oh, shit. But, you know, what? what's particularly in the Arab world, I think, what, what I find again and again and again are people who have no particular reason to love or like me who would on any other day of the week have no problem killing me, in fact, if, yeah. if situations change. If you are, however, if you wash up at their house and you're hungry, almost across the board, you will be treated with, with hospitality. And by hospitality, I mean your host will sit right next to you, patting you on the knee, making sure you're happy, checking on you throughout the meal, ripping off the best parts of the lamb, making sure you're eating well. Again and again and again, when we're shooting those scenes, our host um, will be absolutely miserable that the camera people aren't eating. They're just tortured. They're, they're talking to me, uh, doing the scene. They say, look, you're shaming me. Is there something? Can't I feed these? I don't turn right towards the camera, blowing the scene. And say, can't I feed you? Can't I give these guys some food? You know, it's disgracing me. I mean, I, that, that I'm, I'm a bad host. I'm, and, you know, please enjoy. Have some fun. I can't wait, by the way, till I can bathe in the blood of my enemies. <laughs> like, oh, it, it, there you those, go. That's the guy. It's, wow. it's one of those maddening incongruities of, of, of travel when people who, you know, on any other day would or in different circumstances would mm. do, happily do bad things to you and yours are you know, lovely to you in person. I guess it helps that that's a great perspective to have, though, because I've never traveled and seen people as individuals like that. It's like, you know, you, you see what yeah, you see, yeah. but yeah. I guess it's it's a lot different when you're sitting there with somebody and, you know, regardless of what else they do, they are people and they do know how to host a party or they do know how to have a guest over. And it's like, mm. I guess it's harder to just lump them in when no, you're, you're, sat, always, look, you're not going to end up, you know, hugging it out and singing Kumbaya and, uh, and figuring out, you know, Hey, thanks to the lamb. You know, I guess world right. peace is possible. It, <laughs> it ain't that simple, <laughs> Yeah, but you do see glimpses of, I don't know, something, you know, that, that, hmm. that you it's know, we're not all these, you know, faceless. Statistics. It's one of the best right. parts of parts unknown. It's it's I, I'm a huge fan of the show. I can't wait for the next season. And it's right around the corner. Mm. And so then, has, and then uh, the getaway, of course. Hezbollah let you in when you said what you were there for. That's fascinating to me. Yeah. As for Hezbollah, yeah. <laughs> they're really look. They, they have a gift shop. Okay, they're very 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 slick about their uh, about their public image about uh, about a lot of things. You know, they're not they're not stupid. They you know they're arguably evil. <laughs> um, and they're arguably terrorists, um, but they're not stupid people, and they will take advantage. And this is something I guess we're going to have to think about in in Syria and ev- everything we do. Is that you know when you when the Israelis bombed when I was in in uh, in Lebanon in two thousand six, when the Israelis would bomb uh, what were referred to as Hezbollah neighborhoods or Shia neighborhoods where Hezbollah were, were influential and pre- prevalent and present. Hezbollah with Iranian money would show up the next day and go from house to house. Oh, you lost your house. Dude, that's really terrible. Here's $13,000 to mm. rebuild your home. Wow. And by the way, if we can look after your kids, please stop by our Hezbollah daycare center. And, <laughs> you know, our neighborhood watch will be looking. So they step in very shrewdly to these vacuums created by whatever world events. You know, whether or not it was a good idea to bomb the neighborhood in the first place, let other smarter people argue over that. What I'm saying is they're really shrewd. Mm. about winning hearts and minds by taking advantage of whatever happens. Mm. Like so Hamas like, did that, right? Isn't that how they kind of got in power? They, they built schools and did all this stuff, and, and people mm. just liked them. Well, also, anybody who stands up against a perceived enemy uh, mm. in whatever way is going to get some kind of, you know, he may be a bastard, but he's our bastard, you know, that kind, <laughs> of, a, uh, that kind of a thing. It's Look, it's... Uh, the Middle East and Israel, West Bank, Gaza, 
you know, I went in stupid and I came out stupid. I'm not coming out of there like a like a Middle East expert <laughs> by a mile. You know, I, I I wish I could say I came out of there any smarter, but but, um, yeah, but you yeah. see a lot of stuff. Yeah, and you a lot of ways you get something. more you get more data, you get more confused, <laughs> uh, you get more stuff to think about. But uh, you know, the show's not about um, what I think. It's uh, really. I'll show you what I saw, and you make up your own mind. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting, man. Absolutely. Cool. Really, really interesting I'm in. perspective. <laughs> Another great appearance from oh, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So and I understand, you, by the way, the, the horrible people, like, like for instance, the Opie and Anthony show, are hated by a lot of radio shows. Like, you guys are seen as fucking monsters. Yes. Nice. And you're that. just my friends. I know, isn't that odd? <laughs> but it's really weird to go to places and hear the perspective. Now, this may not be the example of Hezbollah. <laughs> it's pretty close. And then, no, it's worse. In spite of whatever says, here you are sharing your cronuts. <laughs> <laughs> your cronuts. <laughs> the stupid cronut. Did you, did you try uh, one? Uh, yes. Are they that amazing? Come on. Uh, they're pretty amazing, but the DKA, the, the other pastry there is actually in my opinion, mm. better, and you can get as many of those as you want. No problem. That's a great pastry shop, and the cronut is awesome. Do you hate Would that guy, for though, for the way he keep fucking hold on to the cronuts? I have a hatred for him. I, probably <laughs> I like that you can't jump the line. I think it's pretty cool. What was her name? Uh, Emily Roberts, right, to jump the right, line? Right. At the, you know, he said, huh, no, no, back of the line. I like that. <laughs> Pushy. Yeah, it got me. I don't know, somebody famous? <laughs> oh, okay. Someone famous. I guess, yeah. But she was trying to, yeah, get but in front of everybody line, for the cronuts. Starting at, what, 5, 6 in the morning? That's, that's dumb. Look, I don't blame him. It's not his I, fault. I, I mean, it's, you know, if somebody wants to wait four hours in the roaring sun for, for two, you're only allowed two. Or or uh, trade sex, you know, offer to trade sex for a cronut online, which people are doing. Oh, my God. People are bidding like 500 bucks on, on Craigslist for, for, for cronuts. Come on. Uh, look, that's a dysfunction, uh, you know, yeah. in the consumer. The guys, he's just, <laughs> he's a, a very nice guy making a very good product. He could only do 500 of them a day in a small, it's a small pastry shop. He could only reasonably produce a certain amount. Um, he's not forcing you to act completely silly. True. Very true. Imagine that though, you for order of sex and a girl comes over and blows you and then you're like, oh, I thought you said donuts. <laughs> 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 oh, my fault. <laughs> my bad. And this, I thought it was a typo. Hit the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, good, good shop though. Go for yeah. the, I think it's yeah. called the DKA. Um, though is, is, that's the, the. We've tried. We're not on his radar. We've tried to get the cronuts. We got to wait like everyone else. Yeah, but you, everybody, yeah. I mean, Al Roker's hanging around out front. Oh, you know, he's going to the dumpster, you know? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Is Anthony. he allowed to eat cronuts, by the way, do you think? Al Roker? Probably he's not. Stomach steak, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. sure he's doing Is he eating cheating. cronuts? Oh, I think funny. he did. One of those. I'm sure he's cheating. Where he was yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. sure he's getting a cronut in him every once in a while yeah, yeah. i hope so well, all right so it's, guys. The, it's the getaway you. take a trip around the globe with all these uh, famous people that's on the esquire network right yes and that starts uh wednesday september 25th at nine and then of course uh parts unknown season uh two that would be season two yes season two uh, okay wait a minute parts unknown or is it three it's season three it's, it's three right They're calling okay. it season three yeah season three starts september 15th at 9 p.m on CNN. in mind of a chef i don't know exactly when it starts airing but it's coming real soon and it's real good just follow bourdain on twitter to you know see what he's up to thank Thanks, you guys anthony. always fun all right the opie and anthony show on serious x